Jerusalem, the place where the Holy Spirit first descended. It will be from this place that this Sunday, at the end of the Fast of Complete Joy, Bishop Macedo will be ministering the outpouring of the Spirit of God. Prepare yourself like never before, because this date will certainly be marked in your life. This Sunday, 1st May, we shall have the great day of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. My childhood, um, in many ways, were, was not really a happy one. Kind of like concerned my, my dad a lot. He left when I was five years old. He came over to, to the UK where we were meant to, to join him. It took a while for that to happen. A young girl, you do want your dad around, but I didn't have that privilege of having my dad around. So we came to the UK and that's when things started going really, really wrong. Because then, because I didn't get that affection from my dad. I got married because I was seeking for love. My marriage was a nightmare. I was physically, um, mentally abused. Sexually abused me. There wasn't a day, I don't remember a day when I wasn't being beaten up. I suffered from panic attack, anxiety. I couldn't walk on the street by myself. I was really disturbed really disturbed. I remember going to um, a few churches, free to be precise, none of them opened the doors. And that's when I decided that, yeah, it's time I was not here because there's no one else to help. I've come to a dead end. I even took an overdose three times. On the third one, I had to be rushed to the hospital, just want, wanted all the pain to end. I just wanted it to end. In the hospital still, when you know the doctor told me that I was lucky to be alive, and of course I didn't feel lucky because I wanted I wanted to die. I really did. That point of my life, I I was literally I stopped believing that God existed. The worst came. The worst bit came when I had the accident. When I was then kicked in the spine, I was actually told that I would I would never walk again. Then one day my sister she met a a friend of ours. And then the lady said, oh, no, don't worry, it's okay. Just, you know, bring her to church. You know, I, for me, God didn't exist. I remember my sister said to me, she said to me, well, you can accept what the doctor said to you or give God a chance. Next thing, she came back with the bishop. And by the time he left, I guess the seed had already been planted. When I started coming to, to church, when I started attending, I'm going to be honest, for three months I sat there and I really didn't believe. And then until one day I heard about this lady, I saw this lady right in front of me, you know, she was giving a testimony. And that's when I decided that, okay, God, if you do exist, show yourself in my life. Do for me what you've just done for, for that lady. And from that moment on, I started to open my, my heart because all that time my heart had been closed. Then after that, three months later is when I received my healing. I never thought it, could, it would ever happen that I'd ever walk again, but the miracle happened. One day, an assistant was walking past. She said to me, do you have the Holy Spirit? I said, what is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? Then she started explaining about the Holy Spirit to me. And I said, wow, that sounds amazing. There were a lot of things that was going on in my life that I had to, to give up. I mean, I still haven't forgiven my, my dad, even my ex-husband. And I started putting more effort into, into receiving. And I could see myself like slowly and slowly changing. One Wednesday evening, the bishop was there and started the service and then he said, okay, those who wants to receive the Holy Spirit, come forward. I know this today is going to, tonight is going to be my night. And as we were there in the front, I was just, I just literally let myself go and it felt wonderful. It was a joy that I've never ever felt in my entire life. The peace 
everything just came all at once. The Holy Spirit transformed my life in so many ways. I was empty, I was depressed, everything. But the Holy Spirit gave me, it's like a new life. I'm not the same person I was. It's a good difference. I'm really happy with myself. I'm, and that's the joy of the Holy Spirit. My name is Maria Constant and I have received the Holy Spirit. May God bless all of you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm here at the Universal Church in Stockholm, a place that is already prepared for this great day of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that is going to take part tomorrow, that is going to take place tomorrow, Sunday. You saw the testimony of this lady, Maria Constant, and you have been seen during these 21 days and in these days, Testimonies of people who receive the greatest blessing of all blessings, that is the Holy Spirit. What I have to tell you is simple, my dear friend. The Holy Spirit is not for those who, who, who deserve, but the Holy Spirit is for those who want Him, who desire Him wholeheartedly. It's the solution of all people's problems. Even if you are watching me today for the first time, even if in this weekend, in this Saturday, you are there on your Facebook page, someone sent you this, this, this link or you found us, you know that uh, the problem of your problems is not uh, what you are going through, is not what you think. Many times you think, ah, if I solve my marriage problem, everything will be fine. If I solve my financial problem, everything will be fine. The greatest problem of the world is the lack of the presence of God. You saw this lady, how she was receiving, how she was before she received the Holy Spirit and how she is today. Do you want to have a completely transformation of life? Do you want to have a completely joy? A joy that comes from inside out because the true joy starts inside of you and reflects outside in what you need. So if you want, I'll be waiting for you. Like I said before, the place is ready, everything is prepared, and tomorrow, 11 o'clock in the morning, the Spirit of God will descend upon you. Doesn't matter your religion, doesn't matter your past, doesn't matter your life. And also, it doesn't matter if you deserve or not. Because like I said before, the Holy Spirit is not for those who deserve, it's for those who, who want Him wholeheartedly, for those who are thirsty. And if you are thirsty, God has this living water to give you. I'll be waiting for you 11 o'clock in the morning. Birgit has got 106 here in Stockholm. I'll be waiting for you. We're going to connect together with Bishop Macedo. That will be at the Cenacle of the Holy Spirit. And he will stretch his hands towards us. And we declare the Holy Spirit upon you. You know that the Cenacle of the Holy Spirit is the place where the day of Pentecost took place. And tomorrow, the day of Pentecost will gonna take place. Will be the day of Pentecost because the Holy Spirit will transform and will change people's lives. Okay? For more information, you can visit our website www.ucg.se. Also, if you are watching me aboard, you can find the Universal Church near you. May God bless all of you. Have a blessed Saturday. And I will leave you with another story of someone who received the Holy Spirit. And I'll be seeing you here at the Universal Church. Bye-bye. So growing up, I always had both my parents around. So my household was quite loving. So I had a lot of insecurities. I had a deep hatred towards my sisters. So like, even though I was with them for the majority of the time, I always hated them. So like, even we'd be right next to each other, but like, it took everything inside of me just not, I just felt like I wanted to choke her. I had a lot of health issues as well. So I was back and forth in and out of hospital. So that meant like Christmases and New Year's, I was just away from my family. So it started off as asthma. And then they said it was a dust allergy and then they just couldn't find what the real issue was. So I was just in and out of hospital. So this affected my life mentally um, because I didn't know where I would be at, especially in my education. I kept on falling behind and just not being able to do the things that I wanted to do and being restricted in hospital. I just felt alone and isolated the majority of the time. One of the worst moments of my life was when I was at university in Manchester. I decided to go away from London to be away from my family and also to enjoy a bit of the party life. 
and not have to worry about what my parents are thinking or if my siblings know what, what I was up to at the time. And I remember getting so drunk um, and my friends just leaving me with just a group of guys and just waking up and not realising what happened the night before. So my friend kept on inviting me. She kept on saying, oh, I come to this place, especially the youth group. She was trying to get me to come, um, but I just wasn't interested at the time. But she kept on persisting, persisting, persisting. And eventually I came because um, she said she was going to get consecrated on the day. So I just wanted to come just to support her at the time. But then after coming, I was hearing the message. I came for the services and I was hearing how God can actually change your life. Like we're not actually in this world to suffer. Like there's help if you need it. So I've been hearing about the Holy Spirit from the beginning, but what made me actually want to take things seriously and receive the Holy Spirit was in the 21 days. Um, before it started, I already realized my spiritual state and I was like, okay, so how would I get better? What, would, what is it that I need to do in order to receive the Holy Spirit? I had to leave behind. The well, main one was the hatred that I had towards my siblings, especially my sisters, and going to them, humbling myself and asking for forgiveness. And even when I was speaking to them about it, they were so shocked because they didn't even know how much I hated them. They were literally like, wow, like, okay. And then when they forgave me, then we started to build our relationship back up, but a genuine interest and a genuine love. I remember it was a VYG night vigil in the 21 days, and I already prepared myself um, throughout so I was very fasting, praying, seeking, and the pastors and the assistants were going around um, laying their hands on people, baptizing them in the Holy Spirit. And then when they laid their hands on my head, I had the complete assurance that the Holy Spirit was inside of me and it wasn't any emotions. God was just literally telling me like, Victoria, we're in this together and we're gonna go with you together. I made my vow with God that day as well. And I also had my encounter with God, but yeah, I will never ever forget that day. So the old Victoria was someone who was very insecure, very anxious. Um, I depended a lot on people, on alcohol, on external things to make me happy. So the hatred towards my sister, being very jealous and envious, always wanting what other people had. Today, my relationship with my family is a lot better, especially my siblings. I'm also able to be an example to them. In terms of my health as well, I've been also able to like have the strength to use my faith in other areas of my life to my health, my finances. I'm happy, filled with the Holy Spirit, and I know what I want in my life. I'm also now in a position where I'm able to help other people who are also like me. My name's Victoria Eta, and I received the Holy Spirit in the fast of Daniel. Jerusalem, the place where the Holy Spirit first descended. It will be from this place that this Sunday, at the end of the Fast of Complete Joy, Bishop Macedo will be ministering the outpouring of the Spirit of God. Prepare yourself like never before, because this date will certainly be marked in your life. This Sunday, 1st May, we shall have the great day of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. This program is brought to you by UCKG.